So where did Van Gogh paint so many of his iconic works of art? Believe it or not, I'm actually standing right inside of one. I'm here in Arles in southern France, in Provence, which is the first stop Van Gogh went after leaving Paris because it's absolutely beautiful. So we're going to get to see where he painted over 187 works of art here in Arles, and then we're going to head to St. Remy, where then he painted 142 works of art, including Starry Night. Many of you have been asking me to take you to where he painted these beautiful paintings, and so I'm going to do just that. So the first stop I wanted to take you was this, Les Alles Camp. And this is a really unique spot because, as you know, right, Gauguin and Van Gogh, they did not get along, well, they didn't get along at all, is what we all assume. But really, there were two months during that 444 days that Van Gogh was here, two months where they got along and they would go out and they would paint together. This location is one of the places they did that, and they were just out enjoying everything that wasn't Paris, right? So all the beautiful open space, and this place was unique because it's an ancient Roman graveyard. Basically, there are sarcophagi lining both sides of the street, and unlike a lot of Van Gogh's former places that he did paint, this has not changed at all. Pretty unique that you can come and walk inside this painting where both he and Gauguin took a totally different approach to painting the same space, which is really, really cool. All right, so stop two. So we're not too far from where we were just at at Les Alles Camp, and now we're at the uh, kind of the Jardin, the garden here in town, which is beautiful. If you ever get a chance though, check this out. So as we're walking around Arles, you have down here on the ground, it's a picture of Van Gogh with his easel, you know, straw hat on the top. You can see, so you can kind of follow along. But what I love most is check this out. Everywhere Van Gogh painted, uh, if the location still exists, which believe it or not, there's a lot, they have a picture of the painting with the actual background of exactly what he was looking at. So here you have the gate that we just walked through, same gate, of course, and then you have these beautiful trees that are just coming into blossom because we're here in beginning of April, and there's a reason for that, because Van Gogh came down here late February when he finally decided he had had enough. Part of it was because I think he had this terrible cold that he couldn't get rid of, and it was mainly because he could not, he was just drinking and he was smoking way too much. So he came down here to see springtime, right? And he was waiting for it to happen, and man, the minute everything started turning beautiful like it is now, he was out painting. So we're gonna head to the next spot, but first of all, of course, I want you to see this. This is beautiful. Then we're gonna head to the arena, which has a really cool history, and of course, it still exists. We gotta go see it. There are three things that Van Gogh and Gauguin love to do. One, brothels, two, the bars, and three, the arena, which is right behind me. I would love to go inside and tell you, one, why Van Gogh loved it so much, and how they use it even today for different activities. So let's get inside and take a deeper look. Here we are inside the arena, the ancient arena where, of course, Van Gogh and Gauguin would frequent, and a lot of people frequented. It, this place was packed, and you can see that in Van Gogh's paintings. I love Arles for so many reasons, but two really cool reasons is the connection, one, to ancient Roman architecture, right? This thing feels like the Colosseum. It's in actually better condition, which is why they still use it today. During the Roman times, they would use this as like gladiatorial uh, blood sport type events that would happen that you would think of being quintessential Roman. When Van Gogh was here, that stopped, but what took its place was bullfighting, which still happens today. And the reason why is we've got a really close connection with Spain. If you didn't know this, Arles is really close to Spain. In fact, we're like not far at all from Barcelona. But here's what's interesting. In the painting, you see Van Gogh did not, he really, I don't think he really cared for what was happening in the arena with the animals. He loved the people. And as you see in his paintings, he's painting lots and lots and lots of people. I think he just loved the excitement of of being there, probably being with Gauguin, and it was just like uplifting and exciting, especially for somebody who is so depressed so often. But it's so cool that you can come in here today, and it's still, of course, used in the exact same way as Van Gogh experienced it. So much about what I love about France can be summed up in this area. You take these small streets into this beautiful form courtyard area. As you can see right behind me, the Place de Forum, you've got these Roman ruins that are on the wall because this has been a big open square for centuries. So you have all these tables and chairs where people are out at night. And speaking of night, you gotta check this out. <laughs> it's so cool. We're in Arles, so we're at 
the night cafe. Yes, the exact cafe that Van Gogh painted. And of course, right over here where this car is parked, unfortunately, I'll take you over there. That's the angle he was at painting this scene at night. And yes, in the 90s, they actually did repaint it, kind of remodel it a little bit to make sure it looked exactly like the night cafe painting. And they actually then renamed it the Van Gogh Cafe, which seems weird because if you look at the top, the original awning is there, which I think is probably the coolest part about the whole building. And it actually says in French, the night cafe. I love context and it's so cool knowing that this old ancient Roman forum square area is all part of the cafe that Van Gogh painted. This one's not too exciting. I've been here once before and was kind of uh, a little let down, but that's all right. There's still some indications of where it was. So right behind me, you see on the sign here, at the corner here is where the yellow house, the quintessential yellow house. On May 1st, 1888, Van Gogh rented four rooms in the yellow house. Since his goal was to start an artist colony, he wanted the extra space. Van Gogh rented two large rooms on the ground floor that served as an atelier or workshop and the other as a kitchen. And on the first floor, two smaller rooms facing Place La Matine. The window on the first floor nearest the corner with both shutters open was the guest room where Paul Gauguin lived for nine weeks. Behind the next window with the shutters nearly closed is Van Gogh's bedroom. You can see the door and window location are the exact same in his famous paintings. Van Gogh indicated that the restaurant where he used to eat was in the pink building just next to the edge of the painting. The night cafe was just to the left of the pink restaurant, which you cannot see. Interestingly, artist Paul Signac came and painted the building in 1932, which also shows how the bottom level was turned into a bar in Tabac. Unfortunately, during the bombings of World War II, the building was severely hit and later torn down. You can see that still remains is back in the back is the bridge for the train, which you also see right here. But what's really close to here, and I did not know um, until I came down here and saw it for myself, and it's just over here where we're going to head, is where he painted one of his most famous paintings, and honestly, probably my favorite painting that he painted, and it's in a museum in Paris. So let's go take a look at that. And to give you some context, we are maybe like a two minute, not even two minute, one minute walk away from the Yellow House. So to give you some idea that Van Gogh could come here to the Rhone within minutes, which is probably why he painted it pretty, pretty quickly. So this is actually Starry Night. Now, not the Starry Night you're thinking of. That one actually was painted in St. Remy, where we're going to next. But this one, Starry Night on the Rhone, was painted before that. One of my favorite paintings. If you happen to get to the Musée d'Orsay, it is absolutely beautiful. You can see it there. Not many people know that there are two Starry Night paintings that are very different in different locations. So here we are. This is our final stop in Arles. I was really excited to get in here. This is actually the courtyard inside what was the most beautiful <laughs> hospital. And in fact, this is actually the hospital that Van Gogh went to right after he had cut off part of his ear. And he got into like really a manic episode. And while he was here, of course, he had to paint. So they brought his paints and his easel. And then as you can see, right, just like in the painting, it's a picture perfect day in Arles. You see the yellow arches, which were in the painting, all these flowers. Uh, we've got a fountain. It's just absolutely beautiful. This is actually our last stop in Arles, and then we're going to head to where he, basically Theo and Van Gogh's doctor knew he needed to go to a different kind of hospital, and that was only going to be in St. Remy, where they could treat him properly. And so this is his last stop before then heading to St. Remy to make another, I think, 142 paintings. So let's head over to St. Remy, where I'm going to get the chance to show you where he painted Starry Night, which is pretty awesome. So let's get going.